this is where it's at. I found a spot that's out of the, the trees or blocking the wind. It is so nice. Plateau Mountain over there, man, you can sure see the long, non-stop plateau over there. Oh, yeah, this is... Etherington Creek. I'm out here to clean up some loose ends. You know, I did uh, several trails that I kind of did halfway when I did my backpack over here. And so, yeah, this is my first time at this Etherington Creek day use area, and it's probably going to be my only one because I covered a lot of the trails. But uh, I'll hike up to Barrel Creek where, uh, you know, the Barrel Creek Trail, you know, the Barrel Creek, <laughs> Jesus. The Barrel Creek Snowmobile Loop that basically I took over to Barrel Creek on my backpack. And then I'm going to go do the Three Cairns Trail. It's a little peculiar. This looks in pretty decent shape. Alright. Doesn't say that it's closed or anything. But it's boarded up. I mean, I've seen locks on these things. But instead of that, they just nailed some boards up on it. Kind of kind of weird. Uh, it's the weekend. There's a bunch of people out here. Not that many in this one, though, but you certainly... There was certainly a massive amount driving out. All right, let's go check this out. This is generally a snowmobiling area, so... This is kind of a huge snowmobile staging area. Got a nice long hitching hitching post too for the equestrians. Haven't really escaped that. All that is kind of yeah. All right. All that metal really did was bring me around all the all that other area. Now we're finally actually on the road, and I see some blue. There's a new one, permanent sample plot number. And then there's just blue, 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 a whole bunch of blue on a whole bunch of trees. And here I thought I was looking at like Great Divide Trail markers. Yeah, kind of odd. Keeps going down there too. Hey, you got that babbling creek sound every so often basically right beside it kind of nice oh, here we go bit of a view cool i think i'm gonna go climb this thing or at least descend that one not sure which Well, Jillian describes this bridge as barely hanging in. Yeah, it's probably about right, but it looks like it survived the 2013 floods, so you know, it looks at least that old. This bad boy is definitely the one I'm one of the ones I'm gonna climb or descend. Looks pretty cool. Well, this is a public land use zone. And so you will find just ra like random encampments that people have made over the years. Doesn't look like it's been used very lately, but people definitely visited. I mean, there's like a handy wipe of some smokes in here. But yeah, 
I imagine this is the kind of thing you would find in the national parks before they became all official and had a reservation system and all that fun stuff. So nice. I mean, you're just in the hills here, foothills, and then there's a great divide. It's kind of funny. All right, there's the barrel snowmobile loop. That's where I went up from my backpack, so I have completed the Etherington Creek Trail. I want to go up this thing. There's three cairns. Walked around a little bit in this area. There's kind of a little triangle, a couple of fire rings, some old pallet. But yeah, here's where the hard part starts because three cairns is not a trail. It is really just yeah, it's pretty much just uh, bushwhack. So here's where the challenge begins. So this is a four-way intersection, but it's also like a giant meadow. I'm supposed to step into the tree somewhere along this. I walked a ways back there and up along here looking for flagging. I haven't found flagging, but I have found this. And you know what? It's as good a place to start as any. So up we go. All right, it's an easy bushwhack so far. Signs of an old forest fire. I'm always amazed at how forest is pretty much regenerated, but there's still, stuff still stays behind. So here's a short steep meadow I gotta do. I already got a sweet view. Climbing away. This is Raspberry Pass. Oh. I'm thinking I'm coming and doing this one later. We'll see what kind of shape I'm in when I get off here. Well, I'm just doing what I can with the book. It uh, claims at the top of the meadow things level out. Well, they never did. I've just been climbing and then it mentions a rock band. I managed to find a rock band not totally sure if it's the right one, but whatever. I'm just climbing, climbing, climbing in the right general direction. So hopefully it works out. All right. So the book talks about a coal and traversing right. So a coal is a little flow part in between two hills. What I think I started doing was climbing the wrong hill. So the, the hill on the left or uh, to the west. I don't want to do that. I want to end up in the coal between the two of them. Because I want to go up the hill to the east, three Cairns. So here's my bad boy. Here's kind of the valley in between them. That should lead right up to the coal. What I'm doing is just kind of following the ridge without really climbing or descending too much. It's not a bad uh, bushwhack. And that should eventually bring me to the coal, or at least I should break out at some point and see how I can get there. So, when I started going up that meadow, I just kept hammering uphill and uh, started going up the wrong hill. So let's see if I can't fix it now. Get back onto something that's at least mentioned in the guide. Okay, here's my target. You can see I'm up on the hill, that's kind of opposite. Here's the coal. I want to get to here, I don't know, it's quite bushy so I don't know how much I want to get out there maybe here and then I can find my way up right it does look a little steep in places but should be able to manage it well I'm getting there but not the funnest thing I've slowly allowed myself to descend the only thing about that is it does tend to make the bushwhacking harder and that is exactly what's happened just trying to go forward and get to this coal somehow. If I go right down and up, I know that it's gonna be an awful bushwhack. Plus I'm losing a lot of the elevation I already did the work to get, right? So, but yeah, this is pretty, uh, it's pretty slow going. Well, I'm in meadow, one of the meadows. It's kind of below all this. It's kind of in between two. I think it's actually mentioned in the guide. Not totally sure. I was up on here and I kind of ended up coming down like this. I was climbing this guy, right? 
which probably wouldn't have been too horrible if I had climbed the whole thing, but yeah, you know. All right, now I gotta find my way up from here. Oh, just hammering away. Sat down beside, I mean, you could easily decide this was a huge thing of blueberries, but you pick one, crack it open if it's brown, and it's a juniper bush. Yeah, I got sap all over my fingers, sweet. But yeah. Woo. Well, I've made it up this ridge. I can see a Karen up there. I can see the coal down here now. Here's the hill I was climbing for a while. Let's go up to this Karen. Well, I'm not sure how I did it, but there's three big Karens up here and this looks like the tallest thing around. Huge. Oh yeah. I reached the top of this, whatever this is. Woo! thing is hollow and you got this in it. It's been hacked away at with a knife or something. What in God's name? Here you can see those little spikes that go into these holes. It's like little pincers. What is, what is this? Huh. Well, I can't really show you because the wind, but because I got to hide down here. Based on what I read, it looks like I stepped off that hill actually a little bit early. I should have climbed right up it, gone along that flat part, and then started to traverse right. Yeah, you know, it worked out. So the coal's down there, which somehow they got a nice picture of this from. I must have got it from a little higher up. Anyway. I made it up here, all that matters. Okay, I'm gonna take the optional route out of here, which is down this ridge. So far, this is a nice way down. I'm digging it view, at least for now. Yeah. This is where it's at. I found a spot that's out of the, the trees or blocking the winds. It is so nice. Plateau Mountain over there, man, you can sure see the long non-stop plateau over there. This is pretty awesome right here. Well, here we go. This is supposed to get really steep coming down. You can see I'm going right down there. So now it just becomes a tactical take your time type affair. This is a lot of work, but it's pretty fun too. Got great views the whole way coming down this way. Come in on me. Or that. I think it's all going that way. Well, the book didn't exaggerate. This is pretty it's bordering on a scramble. Very close. Basically just right down to that creek. Yeah. 
you know, just take my time. Okay, got that done. Dropped out of the caution sign, which the book actually suggests you might. And just in there, there's that little random campsite I saw. For some reason, someone left a stump here, so I'm going to use that and rest my legs. It can be kind of tough on them doing a scent like that. Well, I think I want to go and do Cataract Creek today, too. I want to go finish off that trail. Not that I need to, I just kind of want to. I mean, I am sort of planning to do another backpack up using that route. Uh, let's see, options. I can go back the way I came, two kilometers back to my car, and then I could drive down to the Cataract Creek use area and do about eight and a half, nine kilometer round trip out to, uh, to finish that trail off. I could go down here, about 600 meters, go up the Raspberry Pass, um, Raspberry Pass, Raspberry Ridge, Raspberry Pass, uh, snowmobile trail up to Cataract Creek, do that, and then hike all the way back to my car along like this valley bottom. That means I would have 21 kilometers left in my day. It's also more fun. A lot more work, but a lot more fun. Yeah, I think today I'm going to take the harder route and go down there. All right, I'm back here. I already went down here and checked to see if there was a bridge across Etherington Creek. I wasn't about to go and waterlog my shoes and then hike 20 kilometers, so there is one. Yeah, I think I started up the right way here. I just, you know, wimped out and kind of went down like that and then up this thing. That's how I did it. And you know, it worked out. It says to turn right at 2,000 meters. Well, I don't really have an elevation device that I trust, so. And if you're climbing the wrong thing, who cares about the elevation? Anyway, it turns out I was climbing the right thing. Whatever, I made it up there. Another bridge that survived the flood. Clap, clap, clap. So this is not an, a trail I know anything about. It's not in the book. My first thought is, is it a trail or just the never ending meadow? It is huge. It is a monster. It's always neat to look back what you did. There's the top, a nice descent, 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 and then pow! Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure what creek this is, but it's kind of nice. A man made piece of wood there. Maybe people cross. Well, since I have nothing to go on with this trail, not totally sure what to do. Up there, the road just keeps on going. But there was a sign pointing down here. And then this is here. There could be something across this. Wouldn't be hard to cross. I don't know. I know that at a certain point, the Raspberry Pass, it breaks off in two. So is this where that happens? Not super sure. I guess I'll just pick one. I think I, I don't mind going up here and see what happens. Okay, so the trail kind of heads up here a little bit. Now this, neither of these trails, like the Raspberry Pass, the top one or the bottom one, nothing, is on my app. So I'm not following any trails on there. All I have to go on is the picture I took of the map back of the trailhead, Etherington Creek. Um, it shows this trail breaking off at 1.8 kilometers. And according to my app, I have only traveled 1.1. So I don't think, I don't think it's breaking off yet. I think it's just, yeah. 
Okay, I think I could stay over here. There's some kind of old lumber mill site up here or something. A bunch of funny looking uh, ground. I saw that from the three Cairns. I wanna go check that out. So I'm gonna go and cross Ackerall and go wander over there. Well, here we got a bunch of twisted up old cable and stuff. And I think there's little doubt that this is a sawdust pile. Seen a few sawmill sites that don't have all this. And then you wonder what they did with it. Did they bury it or right here? Here they just left it. Wow. Well, here's some more twisted up cable. Take a long time for nature to absorb that. And then that just a bunch of uh you know, old boards and stuff like that sticking out of the ground. I haven't really found much else. Sometimes you find interesting things, but a lot of times they clean it up pretty well. Not sure what that was. Oh, yeah. A lot of old wood. Well, this looks pretty recent. I think that's like, that's rubber. I think that's off like a skidoo, a sled. What are you, another little can? Oh, a few of them. One down there. I have no literature, so I have no idea how old this is. Ackland's permanent antifreeze. Looks pretty old. I'm gonna put it back like that so that other people can read that in 20 years. Yeah, finding more stuff now. What are you? Tobacco. <laughs> nice. Yeah, finding a bunch of stuff now. Well, the sawmill site's back there. I carried on walking. Found this is definitely some old logging road and here's, here's an entire barrel hanging out out here. Another piece of metal over here. Yeah, just a few more things on this hillside. I was hoping I'd find like an old outhouse or something, but you know. Well, after I got to the end of all that, Found a pretty, it seems like a pretty good trail. So I'll follow this. I'm not sure if this is actually it. If it starts to wander off or whatever, I'll go on across the river, that creek again, and I'll go and rediscover it over there. No big deal. Well, I came from there and I've joined a much bigger one and there's actually signs. So now I'm on the correct one for sure. Well, here's the intersection I was thinking. You can see there, upper Raspberry Pass. I'm not eager to go try. There's a barrel rotting over here. Here we got ourselves a sign. And you can see how far I've gotten. Well, this trail isn't disappointing. Isn't disappointing. I'm finding some neat stuff on it so far. For a trail that I know nothing about. It's not in the guys. So you just assume it's kind of boring. But hey, you know. Another creek crossing. This is actually a really crappy, it's just a pool here. So I'm gonna go like over here and just hop across the rocks. So this thing is just shrinking and shrinking. I think a little bit of it might be down there. But you know, starting to get at least kind of somewhat close to the pass, right? Because eventually that water is just gonna run out and then it'll turn and start going the other way. I've learned in the Kananaskis that if you go down a pass that's kind of in the middle of the woods, you're going to end up with some of this, right? Just mud. It's flat and no one has done trail work like putting in culverts or rerouting water. So it just all kind of gathers until I get myself out of the, off this pass, right? 
deal with that every so often. Nothing really for views yet. Here I can see uh, Raspberry Lookout on Raspberry Ridge. It is one for the future. Well, if this isn't in the guide because of all the muck, I gotta agree. There's plenty of muck. Dealing with it for a while. I'm still waiting for it to start descending me out of this pass so that this muck will go away to, to some degree, but you know, just flat and mucky. Well, this has gotten pretty tiresome. Back there, there was kind of a trail that went around. A lot of the muck, or swamp, I should say. Eventually, though, it came back, and it's just swamp. Swamp, swamp, swamp. My feet are wet. I've basically given up. And, yeah, my patience is basically worn thin. This is not fun anymore. Oh, well. I kind of, you know, I didn't know anything about this trail, but... If it's not in the guide, it's probably crap. That's a good little lesson to take from this. And it is, it's crap. I have intercepted the other side of the upper Raspberry Pass. Hey, if you're gonna try this, try the upper one. Do yourself a favor, because this is the lower one. Swamp, 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 swamp for, I don't know, like half a kilometer. Oh, all right, well, lesson learned. Looks like it's gonna be all right now to the, uh, down to the bottom, down to Cataract. Yeah, that nice little trail lasted for 100 meters and swamp. Well, the view has improved, but I can't say the trail has, it's still just swamp. I'm going over here. Screw it. I'm bailing on this awful trail. Climb up there, I'm gonna get a view, and then I'm gonna see if I can get down from there. I'll take it. So, I can see a little yellow sign down there. So I think the trail went down and crown there. So basically I cut off a whole bunch of swamp. Um, and it was swamp as far as the eye could see. You know, the next 100 meters was all swamp. Walking through logging blocks, it can be a little tricky, but hey man, it's a nice break from what I was dealing with. All right, back on the swampy trail, literally nothing is swampy except for the trail <laughs> finish this piece of crap off as the crow flies i've got about a kilometer so so back in that planted block i saw a pretty clear trail coming out of it i get the sense that there are trails around all that crap all right all that swamp but of course i don't know about them and you go following a random trail, I mean, God knows. It's, yeah, they just run out on you, they just die out on you, so. Yeah, if I had known, but. So, there might be a way, a possible way of going through there without running through all that swamp, but, you know. Well, suffering does make the views a little better. This is, uh, Mount Burke, you can actually see the little pimple on top of the, the lookout. Well, the trail took a big, long, unnecessary loop. Ended up being a lot longer than a kilometer, but I'm starting to hear Cataract Creek now. Almost done. Well, tiny bit confused here. I actually think down there is the road, but here you got, yeah, a couple other things. I think I gotta head down here a little ways. I wanna get to that uh, bridge and check out the rustler cabin. I just spotted all kinds of weird things down here. Sign, I don't know anything about that. What's that about? 
rim of an old tire. Not sure what you are. That's left over from something. Here's a pallet. There's some recently cut stuff. And over here, you got like someone, uh, I don't know if they're just being a smart ass or whatever, but they uh, cut some chairs out of some trees. Not sure why. Huh. Well, all right then. <laughs> just... Okay. Finally found my way down here, my God. All right, I was here a few weeks ago on a backpack. I wanted to go check out the Rustler cabin and I didn't have the picture on my phone. I was so bummed. So now I have it. This is one of the reasons I came down here. I want to go and see the damn thing. So here we go. Okay, first thing, head on to uh, Cummings Creek Snowmobile Road. Okay, so shortly, there's the Cumming Creek Trail. Shortly turn down a trail, goes 300 meters. So I've marked that spot and I'll walk 300 meters. Well, that joined me back up with the Cummings Creek Snowmobile Trail, so that's wrong. Um, the nice thing is she did draw kind of a map in the guide as to where it is. And I can, you know, I can see the bend in the river on my app where it is roughly, so I can just come, I'm gonna go down and find it that way. So I found what barely would qualify as a trail. Followed it, this is definitely the ridge. Now the ridge is starting to die out. I'm gonna start heading down. Well, first I found this little piece of wood, not little. And I think this is kind of devastation from 2013 and then Look over here, here's the cabin, which survived the 2013 flood. Cool. A few old cans. The story behind this thing is that cattle rustlers built it. And then uh, a ranger discovered it and he used it for like eight years. Obviously those days are long gone of it being useful, but pretty cool. Walk out to the river, really not that far from the bridge. And here's the old bridge, and someone tried to make a shelter here. So look, they even got like moss on top of it. Pretty cool, man. Big tough bridges just swept aside in 2013. Blows my mind. Have a lot of other things. Oh, this? I've never seen rope do this. It got eaten by the tree. And in fact, it looked like it might have kind of killed the tree because, I mean, how is it? Is it kind of moving through the sap there? Yeah, it grew right through the rope. Like, how old is this rope? And how did it hold through all that? The tree looks okay. Huh. There's another little something. I don't know if First Nations have been in here or is this just someone who comes in here and throws their tarps over it, but it's kind of cool. I haven't seen any prayer sashes around. Well, this has been pretty cool. I found a nice little trail heading up the bank again, so I'm going to use that and uh, head on out. Well, there you go. 
I have like 20% power left on my phone and like 15 kilometers left, so. Well, maybe not that much, like 13. I have to limit my usage a bit, but yeah. Head on down Cataract Creek. A few things to see on that one. Cataract Creek is pretty much just a road. I actually saw a truck with some hunters. I don't know if they're hunters, but they had camouflage just turning around to come back down here. So yeah, you can just drive on up here if you like. Hell, my car could probably make this, no problem. Now I'm in a big, long meadow. Not bad views of both sides. Yeah, kind of a boring road, but nice views. Boy, this doesn't end. I can see over there, it's finally gonna climb up and around a corner. I can see there's another trail over there. Like I can see the signs. That's kind of the one that I came down off of and hit on Raspberry Pass. Then I followed it over to the bridge. So it'd be a way of changing things up coming through here. But like walking up this road with that, that's not that either, you know? Not that at all. That's a sensational view. I was wondering what's going on here, but I think this is the former road. I think this was, here's the reroute after 2013. So I'll just follow this. Now this new road kind of climbs up here. Gives you a bit of a view. I think if I come back here in a backpack, my first day would be pretty boring, just based on everything I've seen up to Lost Creek. I'd probably, uh, maybe I'd go use the old road and uh, do a few crossings and just check it out. You can even see kind of an old bridge down there. You know, that'd be kind of cool. I guess that's where the old road starts. Well, uh, yeah. I'm gonna have to do that next time. When I backpack down here, I'll try this out. It'll change things up. Because the road, kind of boring. I mean, you get nice views of the GDT over there, the Great Divide, but yeah. Speaking of which, it looks like weather's kind of coming in on me, so. I don't think I have any chance of getting back to my car before it arrives here, but uh, yeah, I can at least make tracks. Okay, there's the corral. Means I still got a little ways to go. Well, it may have been just a road the whole way, but yeah, opens up and this is quite the little panorama. I think I'm almost done this guy. Well, I know that that is John Left Hand's cabin down there, but I'm not gonna see it today. I know that it's like, 15 minutes from the Cataract Creek Ugh. parking lot over there. I can see it when I do my backpack one day coming up this that I have planned. And I mean, my phone is on this last gasp, has like 13% power. And uh, I got weather coming in. And yeah, I just don't have an Emmy today. So I've seen a lot. And I will see that another day. Well, I made it here. The good news is that I had a better look at the map. I thought it said 8.1. The number is kind of struck a little bit. It actually says 6.1. The bad news is that it's a snowmobile trail. May have had kind of a bad experience on a snowmobile trail, you know, like two hours ago. Oh, I am so tired. I bit off a lot here. <sighs> Things I do just to go and see some random trails, my God. I just got one word, no. Look at this. Immediately I'm into the water. Hell with this. Just walking back on the road. Well, I don't think this was worth it. The plus I'm doing Raspberry Pass was seeing that sawmill. And that's all. My curiosity is satiated. Big deal. I really didn't have much curiosity about that pass. So anyway, 
You win some, you lose some. This will uh, aches and pains from this will go away though. see now on the other side of raspberry lookout i am having luck with weather it's really not coming in very fast you can see over here some nasty stuff's coming i actually do have a chance of getting back to my car before it hits nice view i know i have like four kilometers left but it still sucks seeing this in front of you Well, much as I'm not real happy about this roadwalk, you do see interesting things sometimes, like, say, an ancient old wood-burning stove. Wow. I wonder how old. And they'll endure here a long time, too. Huh. Kind of cool. Oh my god, look at this! <laughs> Who the hell fit this year? That's classic. Hey buddy, who the hell? They even put a carcass, like a, like a backbone down by it. Someone's talented man, this is really good. even secure it yeah they got it on there somehow they just nailed it or something <laughs> fantastic someone has an awesome sense of humor man I love it <laughs> well I saw this down here down off the road i'm hoping it's the valley bottom trail if it is it'll save me 1.2 kilometers so i'm gonna chance it there's even a nice bridge here this is gonna get me into the campground a lot faster than the road would well i got four percent power on my phone uh Man, did I ever beat myself up. That was a long day. I'm sure I did 25 kilometers or something. This is a good, this is a good one for me. Plus, uh, you know, the three, the three Cairns. So that was a pretty good climb and a lot of bushwhacking and sort of thing. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> seeing that Sasquatch just brighten up my whole day. What genius. Like, honestly, what frickin' genius. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Get out there and hike, man. Go see that damn Sasquatch for yourself. <laughs>